Welcome back. This is going to be hopefully a quick video. I wanted to talk about measurement tools and, you know, this is kind of the, the phase of, of learning this metal work and, and lathe work uh, that I'm in. I, I wanted to start being able to speak a little bit more um, proper when it comes to measuring. I want to talk about, you know, in, in a lot of my previous videos, I say 10 tenths or hundreds, but really the machining world, if you, if you watch videos and you talk to, to people in the industry, they talk about thousands. Everything's measured in thousands of an inch. So I want to start using that proper terminology, thousands of an inch. So I want to talk about a couple different measuring tools that I have in my possession. Um, I went with a, a cheap digital caliper for ease of use and just to get started. Um, nothing that I'm working on at this time is precision by any means. But, you know, I wanted to get something. This one is is not very good quality, but it, it does work. It's close enough for the things I'm working on. But it doesn't measure in thousands. It only has uh, the hundredths position. So I can only get as close as, let's say this would be 270 thousandths of an inch, if I'm speaking properly about how we measure. So I could never really get down to the individual thousandths or even tenths if you go beyond that. Um, this micrometer, of course, will go to measure in the thousandths. Um, it doesn't have the tenths scale on the top like many uh, Starrett's and other brands do, but you know, what I want to do is talk about each of these and how I'm learning to use them. Um, I'm, I'm no expert, I'm still learning, but this is a perspective for anyone else who's new out there trying to get into it. And some of the things you might come across, which would be wanting, you know, finding yourself struggling on how to, how are you measuring? What, what, is this, what do these numbers mean? Well, these are all, everything's measured in thousands of an inch. So let's talk about the digital caliper first and what are all the parts and how do you use it? It's, it's not very difficult to use, but we'll go through it just in case anyone's curious, wanting to buy one. I, I would like to say, if you can afford a better one, spend more than 10, I spent 10 bucks. It's plastic, there's some flex and deflection in this. In this. Maybe get one that, that's metal um, so you can actually mark parts and things like that if you're using uh, like some bluing ink or, or Sharpie. Um, the other thing is it's, it'll be more rigid and better quality. But if you're on a budget like me, this one does measure good enough for now for me. Well, let's talk about the parts. What we have, the two, there's, there's a hand, handful of ways to measure with this. Typically, you're going to use these outside jaws, which will measure the diameter of any particular piece of material. So let's say we're measuring, let's put this over here. If you're measuring this, you would just snug it up till it's snug, a little bit of friction, and there, half an inch. This is half inch stock. The There's also uh, inside jaws. These are called inside jaws, and that's so you can measure the inside diameter of something. Let's say the socket. We want to measure, measure that across. You bring it out, make sure it's snug, and there's a half an inch. It's a half inch socket. So that's what we would expect. The There's also what's called a step gauge, which is kind of handy, and I'll show you why. It's it's this portion on the back. I don't this I wouldn't call this precision. It's plastic, right? But it is it still serves a purpose. It, it's a feature of these maybe maybe not many people know. Um, so what you can do is measure show you the back. See, I have I have a step on the handle of this hammer I made, and you can put it here and you snug this up until you get to, to the step. There you go. And there we go. 360 thousandths of an inch, or as close as I can measure it with this device. Most calipers, digital or otherwise, veneer dial in dial calipers, they're gonna have a lock 
a locking screw up here somewhere. This one does not. They also, instead of a fixed uh, grip, so to speak, they'll have a wheel to turn and, and it gives you a little bit more fine uh, accuracy when you're measuring. So there would be a wheel, thumb wheel down here, and there would be a locking screw up here. And the last thing I want to explain is the depth gauge. Um, what you do is, let's say we want to measure how deep this uh, thread, threaded hole that I made is. You put it on here, you run it, run it down until it stops. There's our depth, we read it. We're about 300 thousandths of an inch. That's how you read that. Uh, one more example, let's see how deep is the, is this socket. Put it on here, run it down. You know, again, none of this is accurate. I'm on this pig mat, but one, one inch, 440 thousandths and Let's see how we did here. So 202 inches, 120 thousandths. Let's see if we do this over here. Wood. Yeah, I, I did it off camera on wood, but it actually measures pretty close with the depth gauge if you're not on pig mat or something like this, you know. So. Anyway, that's most of the parts on, on, of a of a caliper, whether it's digital or or a uh, got one with a dial. Um, most of them are going to have all those common parts. This particular one, I haven't even attempted to use the the manual scale. Again, it it really it, this is not going to be used for precision. It's just used to be for convenience, if anything. Let's move on to a micrometer. Um, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there with smart people that can teach this stuff. There's even teachers of, of the craft that, that have good videos out there. You're watching this one, I just wanna give this from a new new person's perspective, how, how to read one of these. They're not terribly complicated if you just pay attention to how to read it. They're all going to be pretty much the same from what I can tell. No matter the brand, whether you get Starrett, uh, Central Tool Company, or, or Lufkin, whatever it is that you get, they're all going to read the same. Uh, this is Imperial. Uh, again, I'm, I'm focusing on reading in thousandths, inches, uh, that sort of thing. So let's go over the parts of your standard micrometer, and then we'll get into a demonstration on how to use it. Um, all, all micrometers are going to have an anvil. That's this portion here. They're gonna have a spindle. That's the, the portion here that will slide in and out to measure the material that you're working with. They're gonna have a lock. This one is a rotating lock. Some of them have a little, uh, like a switch that you can move back and forth to lock it in place. You have your sleeve, which is this portion with your veneer uh, graduations. You have your thimble, and then a lot of them will have a ratchet, a ratcheting end, ratchet stop. Um, so what you do is you, you snug it up with your thimble, and then the, the ratchet will, will allow you to put the proper pressure on your material, and it'll give away so you can squeeze that, you know, rotate that until it spins freely, and it should apply the proper pressure for accurately measuring your material. The last piece on all of them, you're, you're going to have the frame, and that's this portion here. That's your frame. So let's get on to using this, and we're going to use this half-inch material as an example. If we come back to the digital caliper, we measure it. We are at 490 thousandths. We know it's closer to 499 thousandths because um, I've sanded it down, but it's, it's nearly half an inch or 500 thousandths. But this isn't accurate enough for what we want to do. How do we use a micrometer? Uh, this is an inch, inch measuring micrometer. All of them come with an, pretty much the same um, thimble and spindle and all of that. They just, the frame is what's bigger and 
they all will tend to have a an inch um, draw back and forth in order to measure. So depending on the material you you're working with, you'll use a different size micrometer. So what we want to do is snug this up. I'll show you the ratcheting pour. So you get it up there. You don't want to crank it down. You just want it to be snugged up. And you can use, see how this just spins? That's supposed to apply the proper pressure onto the material. And then this should, well, before we do that, there's our proper pressure. We want to lock it in place so that it can't move again and then we pull that out, and now we have our proper measurement. Let's do that again. So we bring, we bring this in until it's really close, and we snug it with our ratchet to make it as, it should be the proper pressure to measure accurately. And then what we wanna do is lock it in place. And now that that's locked, we, we should be able to just snug that out of there. And since it's locked, we, we shouldn't be able to move this again and disrupt the current measurement. Now, what we're looking at is your, this center line is your, this horizontal center line, that's your reference line. And that's what you want to read off of your thimble width. The all of these are in hundreds. So you have one, a hundred thousandths, not hundreds. This is, this is from zero to 999 is your measurement uh, for the, the throw back and forth. Well, each one of the top numbers is 100 thousandths. So if you look below, there's, they're separated into four equal parts. And this is common among most uh, micrometers. You have 25, 50, 75, 100. 25, 50, 75, 200. So on and so forth. Well, we know this stock is nearly a half an inch, but we suspect it's not reading quite a half an inch. So let's see what we came up with with this micrometer. We know we're past 400. We expect to be nearly 500 thousandths. Now, just because you see the five and you see the line, that doesn't mean that it's 500 plus thousands. You have to pay attention to the thimble. If this was lined up, if the horizontal line reference line was lined up with zero, we would be exactly 500 thousands or half an inch. But since we're, we haven't made it to the zero yet when we're tightening it up, we have to come down to the lowest the closest number that is below the reference line. So we know that we're, if we go with the 25 increments, we know that we are at 475 plus whatever the thimble has. So the thimble's not quite 25. This is this, if you rotate this all the way around, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We add 475 thousandths plus 20, 21, 22. Well, we don't go to 22 because it's it hasn't come down to the reference line yet. So we, we need to measure, we need to add 21 thousandths. So 475 thousandths plus 21 thousandths is 496 thousandths. So the width of this material is 496 thousandths to be more precise than 490 thousandths with this one. So that's that's how you measure these. It's not complicated once you use it. I, I suggest if you're learning, grab some different material and, and test. Try uh, measuring different, different stock. Um, it would be really nice if you had some gauges, uh, pin gauges or some some gauges that are that will test accuracy. So you, you have a known reference. I don't have anything like that. I just have an estimate. I know this was half inch to begin with, so we're pretty close. Um, some of the micrometers have an additional 10 lines on the top, you'll see. And what those are is to measure in tenths. So it will give you 
another decimal place in measuring your, your measurement. So we have 496 thousandths, and you could then say, and one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth, tenths of an inch. So we don't have that on here, but how you would work with that is once you have your 496 thousandths added up, you would then find whichever line here, you ignore the, the numbers on at this point, you'll have these 10 lines and you'll line up exact, whichever one of these lines up exactly with one of those 10, it'll only line up with one of them. That is your tenths indicator. Um, let's measure a couple more uh, pieces of material before we call it a video, just to give you another example. All right, we're gonna do another, one more measurement just to give you an idea of how to read one of these micrometers. Um, let's just use this socket as an example. Kind of measure with the digital calipers, we have 710 thousandths, uh, or it's probably a little bit over, in between 710 and 720 thousandths. That's as close as and accurate as we can get with, with that. But let's say we need to know a little bit more precision. We're making a bush and we want to slide this into another piece of material. It's got to be more accurate than that. So we take our micrometer and we snug it up again. And then you can use the ratcheting, the ratcheting stop, lock it in place. And now we can remove our material. It should have some friction, but it should also come out of there. And it does. And now we got it locked and we want to read it. We know we should be between 710 and 720 thousandths from this one. So if we look again, it, like we talked about, there's our horizontal reference. There we are, we're over the seven, but we know we're not going to be 725 we are not between, we're not over 725. So we know we have to add whatever we come up with on the thimble with the 700 thousandths. So 715, 16. So you don't go to 17. So 716 thousandths of an inch. That's in line between what we have here. So that's how you read that. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.